Here I am in San Francisco at this latitude and longitude with a temperature of 50, around 54 degrees Fahrenheit and some particulate matter in the air that was last recorded ah, just yesterday. Oh, excellent. So this is a pretty recent air quality rating. So this is where the Weather Here project is right now. And what I want to do in this video is now, every time I press this check-in button, save all of this information into a database so that I could go onto a view check-ins page, there's nothing there right now, and see all of the records, everything that I've ever saved in the database, plotted on a map. I'm realizing, however, that this button that I have here is kind of useless. I have this check-in link and the view check-ins page. So every time I go back to check-in, it's kind of reloading my current latitude, longitude, and checking me in. I could have that happen in a separate button. I mean, this is really an interaction design question. So I'm not going to pretend to get into like good user experience or interaction design in this video. I just want the functionality to work. So I think to simplify, I'm gonna get rid of this button and just have, whenever the page loads, have the information logged into the database itself. And then if I want to re-log into the database, I can always just click this check-in uh, link, which will then refresh the page. And this is gonna simplify a lot of things. So I'm gonna move and remove this button. So if I go back here, we can see, okay, the button's not go is gone. Now I have this add event listener missing. So I can go back to my code and ultimately all of this stuff that's happening right here, when I click the button, is posting to the database. And what do I wanna do? I want that to happen right here. So I wanna send everything to the database right here after I've finished all of my API calls and I can paste that in right here. And what I actually wanna put in the database is the latitude, the longitude, the weather, and the air quality. So this now will take all of that data and send it back to the server and save it into the database because this is functionality that we already built in the previous Data Selfie app project. There's a little bit of an irony here, I suppose. I request the data from Dark Sky and OpenAQ on the server, send it to the client to display on the web page, and then send it back to the server to put it in the database. I probably could bypass that and actually just have it go into the database itself right here uh, when I'm actually requesting that weather information at that latitude and longitude. But I really want to keep things modular and organized and have a completely separate route, this post route that puts stuff in the database. This is probably a, a, arguably a better way, at least to demonstrate how to do this in larger, more scalable projects, even though it doesn't really matter here that much. So going back into sketch.js, I can see I now have this thing entering in the database. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, refresh this page. Response has already been declared. So once again, I'm kind of using the sequence of API, URL, response, JSON. And I've got that down here, uh, response, JSON. So let's call this uh, DB response, uh, DB JSON. And we'll put this here. Um, and then just to sort of see that, let's console log the db.json to see that it went into the database. And here we go, hit refresh. Okay, so this is what was saved in the database, all the data, and it's displayed here. Um, I can go to view check-ins and we can see, there it is. I'm just, there's nothing on the web page here. It's just console logging what's in the database. And I can go back to check-in again and check-in again. And I can switch my location to Moscow and check-in again and check-in again and switch my location back to Berlin and check in again. And now if I go to view check-ins, we will see there are six entries into the database at all these different latitudes and longitudes with this weather and air quality. And if I go look at my actual database file, I can see everything is here in the database file as well. One quick thing before I start to look at plotting the check-ins themselves is um, you'll notice that the default from Dark Sky is to get the temperature reading back in Fahrenheit. Um, this can be changed. Uh, if I actually look at the API documentation, there's a little section on units here. I can add a URL query string property, units equals something to specify the units, and SI units are international system units, which is typically Kelvin, um, but that would come back, um, SI units would come back in Celsius. So I could go to the server where I'm making my uh, request to Dark Sky. I could add a slash and then a question mark for a URL query string and then say units equals SI. And then of course I would want to update my uh, index.html page accordingly, which is right over here and change that to a C and then go back and hit refresh. 
And there we go, I've got Celsius. So I just wanted to make sure I showed that to you before we go on to the next step of saving every, of plotting everything from the database. Moving on to view check-ins, what I'm gonna go do first is just grab my code, my leaflet.js example code from the International Space Station project so that I can start with a map on this page. I'm back and I've added a map to the page using leaflet.js. So the only things I pulled from my International Space Station examples are the URLs for the leaflet.css and leaflet.js files, and then a div for the check-in map, I'm calling it check-in map, and then in logs.js, I just have a little bit of code to specify the tiles from OpenStreetMap and place the map uh, at, with, at zoom level one, latitude longitude zero, zero, right there on the page. The data from the database has been loaded with the get data function by making a fetch call to the API endpoint. And we can see here in the browser, these are seven check-ins at seven different, seven different latitudes and longitudes along with the weather and presumably also the associated um, air quality information. So now what I wanna do on this check-ins page is see all those points on the map. Now, while it might be fun to draw some kind of path from check-in to check-in or some kind of custom drawing on top of the map, I'm just gonna do for simplicity's sake the same thing I did in the International Space Station example and place each check-in as a marker on the map. So if I go to the leaflet uh, documentation, I can grab this uh, marker code, go back to my code, and here is the for loop where I'm going through every element from the database. So I've gotten the, de the data from the database um, and I can set a marker to uh, data dot uh, oh, oh, item, sorry, it's item.latitude, comma, item.longitude, and add it to, what did I just call it, my map. So there we go, now if I go back to the page here, we see, there we go, I've got a marker at every one of my check-ins, and I can zoom and find it. Now, if I click on the check-in, or if I hover over the check-in, nothing happens. So the only last thing that I wanna do is place some text on over the check-in that has the weather and air quality information. And I've basically done this already, so I'm just gonna repurpose the code that I had before. I'm gonna switch over and find that index.html page which has this text. I'm gonna grab it all. I'm gonna bring it over here to my logs file, and I'm going to say uh, const uh, pop uh, text, I'll just call it txt equals, and I'm gonna use a uh, string literal, and now these were all spans, but what I'm gonna do is just pull the data that I want. So here I wanna have item.latitude, item.longitude, and then now I just want uh, weather.summary, and I'm gonna finish this off. All right. I have now typed all of this in. I've got a long block of text, a sort of narrative, so to speak, with my text. The weather here is, and then I'm pulling bits of data from each element of the array of information I got from the database. So for each item in the data array, I get the item's latitude, the item's longitude, the item's weather summary, the item's weather temperature, all this stuff. This is the way that I've organized it. And then what I should be doing is saying, uh, take that marker, put it in a variable, and then say marker bind popup. This is a function that's part of leaflet.js where I can bind some text to a popup anytime I hover or click on a marker, bind that text. We can go see now if this works, go over to the browser, hit refresh, and there we go. We see all of the markers for all of my check-ins, and if I click on any of them, look, there we go. I've got the information about the weather and air quality at that time of check-in. All right. Let's add one more check-in. So I'm spoofing this location, which is Rainbow Street in Jordan, <laughs> and I'm gonna hit check-in, and then, oh no, there's no measurements there. <laughs> so I would like to still put the check-in in the database, even with no reading, and then have that be a pop-up that just says no air quality reading. I mean, I just really, I want Rainbow Street <laughs> in my database. So right now, I don't think, I think if I go back to my code, we'll see here that if the error happens and there's no, um, no reading available, I don't add to the database. So let's think about how to handle this. Um, I am going to make these variables, let lat, long, um, weather, and air all be variables before uh, before the try, then I'm gonna set lat, long, weather, and air. 
And if, um, and then I'll take this where I post it to the database, and I will have that happen after the try catch. So no matter what, the error will um, be entered into the database. But if there is no reading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say error equals of object with value of negative one. So I'm going to kind of like hard code something in the database if there is no reading with this uh, value of negative one. And that will get posted into the database. So now, I could go back to my check-in. I'm going to check in again on Rainbow Street, and I'm on Jordan. That got entered into the database. Now I can go to the view check-ins, but I've got to check now. <laughs> I've got to go to my logs code, and if item.air.value is less than zero, so if it gets a negative reading, I want my text to be uh, different. So we're going to start with the weather information. The, everything's going to have weather information. Uh, so I, then I'm going to say, if it's negative, I'm going to do text plus equal no air quality reading with a space. Otherwise, I'm going to add the particulate information with a string literal. And this should come up here. Okay, I'm good. So this is a little bit convoluted and maybe there's a nice way to make this more elegant, but I'm creating the marker. I'm putting the weather text in. If the, what comes back from the database is a negative one for the air value, that means there's no air quality reading. Otherwise, I put the, the actual air quality reading in the text. So let's see now if we view the check-ins, if we have Rainbow Street and Amman Jordan with no air quality reading. View check-ins. Oh, assignment to const variable. Oh, so this can't be a const. It's got to be let because I'm adjusting it. Let's hit refresh. View check-ins. And there, look, this looks like no air quality reading for Aman Jordan right there. This project is completed, sort of. There's a lot more that you could do. First of all, I haven't really taken the time to think about visual design or interaction design. You might take a look once again at Joey Lee's version of the project that has a lot more design elements to it. You might think about like, well, how is the map? Where is it, the zoom happening? There are so many different ways you could draw on the map. Maybe you could have a path between check-ins. Um, think about animating. You could rewrite the text to be have more poetic language. There are a lot of possibilities. You could even just, there's a lot more data in there from the weather and air quality uh, uh, APIs that I'm using. So I'm gonna let you take this project further in those directions, but I wanna show two really important things in two separate videos. Number one is, if I wanna open source this, which I do, how can I open source this and publish the code without my API key, without just sort of having to delete my API key? What is a way to deploy a project separating out secret keys that you want to be hidden separate from the source code? So I'm gonna show you how to do that with something called an environment variable. That will come in the next video. And then the last piece that I'm gonna show you in the final video is how to actually take this project and deploy it onto the web. So I'm gonna look at maybe a few different options for doing that and just pick one um, that you can follow along and have your project live online. So thanks so much and see you in the next video.